So I'll, I'll move this. My my concern here, it would have been Cam Akers if, we had re- if the Rams had played before Sunday, but they play today. It's a guy we've been out on all offseason, but I will go with someone that will be playing after people come to watch this, and that's going to be Chris Godwin. This might seem like a cop-out because we don't know currently if he's going to be playing for week one at all. But my position at Chris Godwin is that even if he does play, I'm sitting him for week one. Early in the offseason, we had come out as a team and discussed the news and the notes around him and his injury recovery saying that he might not play until week 10, 12. You might not see Chris Godwin through the bye week, and it's just crept up and up and up and up. And he is so far ahead in his in his recovery that I am just very, very, very suspicious. Um, so even if he does play, I want to see week one. I want to see what comes. He could be slow for the first month, right? He could come out and just kind of be a decoy going through the motions, this, that. He's not a player that I really am that interested in. Where you've been drafting him in your leagues, um, I'm for the most part is Ben as your wide receiver four. I just feel like you'd have another option. I'd be starting Michael Thomas, Elijah Moore, Adam Thielen, these types of players over Chris Godwin in week one. I love Chris Godwin. It's wheels up if we see a good week one, but I am, I'm concerned right off the bat. There's also uncertainty with Russell Gage. We don't know if he's out there. If Gage is out there, not hundred percent and Godwin's out, out there hundred percent. I don't, I don't want to touch either of these guys. The pivot I would consider is Julio Jones. I think in a week one with Tom Brady, this could be a, a little bit of a sneaky start if you are a little more desperate. Um, and the thing that probably has me the most scared with the Chris Godwin is he plays Sunday night. It's the last game on the on the, the pallet you have for the week. And if you plan on playing Chris Godwin and his game time decision at f- you know 4 o'clock Pacific comes out and says he's not playing, what are you gonna? Where are you gonna go? Right? I mean, Russell Gage probably is not on your wire. If he is, he might not be 100%. Julio Jones was probably one of the last couple picks in your leagues. You're not going to be able to pivot there. I, I, unless if you had another Tampa Bay player, I think it's a little risky for week one to come out and roll Chris Godwin. So that's that's my scare player of the week. I, I wouldn't be putting him into my lineup. I love Chris Godwin. I actually hope they don't play him this week because I, I want just an extra week, you know, just because it is a little bit accelerated of a timeline for him to come back. No, re- no reason to over overstimulate or push it too hard the first week and re-injure. And then he's out for another seven to eight or whatever. So I'm with you on that. Um, I, I actually, I will be playing him in Scott Fishbowl if he plays, because I don't, I don't have a lot of depth at that point, at this it's point tough. with those it's receivers. In that, in that so I, I might run with him, but in other leagues, I'm going to be sitting him um, just because, I want to see the. I want a week to see it, and I there's a lot of a lot of moving parts that have um, come in and out of that organization this this off season, especially with their offensive line, that it might take some time for them to gel, or might have might uh, require them to have a couple of games to get seasoned for just even communicating or having that chemistry across the line, where Brady has the time in which he's expecting things like that, where it could be a much bigger Leonard Fournette game. Uh, first weeks of the season for dump offs as well as just safety blanket moves 